2003, I gave birth to my first child, a little girl who we named Tessa, and she seemed perfectly healthy at birth, but within 24 hours, she began having unexplained, life-threatening seizures. She spent a few weeks in the hospital, and we were able to get some of her larger seizures under control, and we brought her home, and things looked pretty good, but she just could not stop having seizures. We watched her diagnosis go from benign idiopathic epilepsy, which means just non-harmful seizures for no apparent reason, all the way to catastrophic epilepsy, you know, where we thought that she might not survive her first few years. And so they did not think it was an inherited type of epilepsy. And so we did have more children and we were lucky enough to have two healthy little girls, Lily and Maggie. After that, we had one more baby, little Colton, our little boy, um, and he too was delivered seemingly healthy. And then within 12 hours, I can remember thinking that something was maybe a little off, you know, but not quite certain. And then within a few hours more, it became apparent that something was really off. Colton was having seizures. We both knew, just with that one sentence, Colton is having seizures, that our lives had changed in a massive way. This, um, this wasn't just seizures. This is an entire life-changing event. Hospital trips and of, you know, being poked and prodded, and we knew that it wouldn't just affect Colton. It would affect Lily and Maggie and Tessa too. So that one sentence delivered more heartache for both of us than I think anyone should have to go through. As devastating as Colton's seizures were to our family, it suddenly became a much clearer picture for our medical team. We now had a strong suggestion that this was indeed an inherited genetic epilepsy. And so our team went to work trying to find a genetic marker for this type of epilepsy. And sure enough, um, a few months after Colton was born, I got a call from Matthew Bainbridge at Baylor and he said, I think we found the gene and I think there's something to do about it. Finding a genetic marker for this type of epilepsy is really halfway to a cure. It gives us much more of a clear path to follow and to galvanize our research teams, Baylor and Stanford and UCSD and NIH and, and all across the country who are interested in these projects now because we have a genetic marker for this type of epilepsy. Once Tessa and Colton had an SLC13A5 deficiency diagnosis, we started hearing from other families across the country and around the world who had also recently received this diagnosis. And it became clear that we needed a way to connect these families with these doctors and researchers. And so we formed Tess Research Foundation in order to do just that and in order to push some of this research forward. We are funding open and collaborative research at top-notch institutions and we are trying to listen to these families who have lived this. My daughter has hundreds of seizures a day and the truth is that there aren't many, if any, adults walking around with hundreds of seizures a day. Her prognosis is not good. What we need are treatments. These kids are sick now. They need better treatments now. The timing is really critical and we think that science is up to this task and so we are in a hurry to catch this disease up to modern science. <laughs>